Hey, how's it going out there? All right, so here's the video you've been waiting on. We're going to go front to back on this Garmin 93SV UHD unit. All the settings, except for some of the custom settings and the ones we can't do here on the shop that you have to do on the water. You want me to do what? You, you want me to start out with the factory defaults? So it's just like when you took it out of the box? Sure, sure, we can do that. We can do that. Okay, here we go. All right, settings, system settings, right there. There it is, reset. You know, I've been working for a year to get these settings right where I want them, and I got a really good picture. Sure you want me to do it? Okay, just for you. All right, here we go, reset. Okay, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Here we go, I'm calm, I can do this. Ready? Okay, still got a screen. <laughs> no smoke coming out. All right, um, probably would have been a good idea for me to write all my settings down before I did that, huh? Well, anyway, let's get to it. Let's go to the video. All right, so before we get started with this, let's go ahead and make sure our transducer's turned off. To do that, simply press the power button once real quick and disable all sonar. So when I got all done, I made a spreadsheet and I wrote down all the settings that we're going to go over in this video. At the end of each chapter, you're going to see a screen that looks like this, which is going to tell you what the next chapter is. And it'll have that spreadsheet and all the settings on it. So you can take a screenshot of it, or if you want, go to my Instagram page and message me your email address, and I'll go ahead and send you a copy of that spreadsheet. All right, folks, so we got the scary part done. We got the uh, factory defaults restored. And now let's go ahead and jump into it. Unfortunately, when I came up, they, I couldn't adjust the backlight uh, before I answered a few questions. And basically, it wanted to know what country, what language we're in, the boat type, and of course the shallow water alarm, collision time alarms, and things like that before it would let me get in and adjust the backlight. And I have to adjust the backlight down to about 38% for you so you can see it real good. So we got a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and jump into it. From our home screen, let's go to settings and let's go into the system and display. Now display from here, you can adjust your backlight. You got a screenshot capture, which from my understanding, the eco maps really don't utilize that, uh, but I've got it turned on anyway. And then the background, and I want to go ahead and change that because I don't like that darker background. I like this lighter background. I can see that a little better. Color mode, this is important, guys. Color mode, you can go to auto, but when you first launch your boat in the mornings, it's going to be on these night colors, which is a little bit different. And it's okay if you don't mind it. But what I do, I leave mine on day mode and I change it if I want to. Because sometimes the sun will be up and you want to look at that day mode and it's still still in the night mode. So I go ahead, I don't put mine in auto, I leave it on day. Menu bar display, the show and hide. If you toggle that, and as we go through, you'll see that these have got little toggle buttons. And it's called the auto hide. And what that does is after a few seconds, that bottom menu will go away and if you want it back, you just touch the bottom and it pops back up. It gives you a little more screen to work with. So some people like that. Uh, personally, I just leave it on show. And from there, we got GPS. And GPS, we got speed filters and auto. Next one down, got turned off. Galileo is turned off. Initialized position. I uh, believe that is a setting for one of the others that we have turned off already. 
and transmit turn on so that's where I had all mine and yeah I got a cheat sheet here I'm looking at auto power off is it one hour I just leave that at the default language English system information all right event log that'll show you the last time you updated your software if you had an abnormal power down uh, service loss things like that software licenses if you ever call Garmin support this would be a good screen to take a picture of and same thing with the next one the Garmin devices take a picture of that you can also you can enter your whole ID if you'd like to and you can see my latest version here is uh, 18.00 just updated that reset reset settings and delete data in reset settings and clear user data but that will get rid of all your waypoints and everything so we don't want to do that and then there again if you're having trouble with your maps you may want to take a picture of that before you call Garmin support and we'll go to the beeper all right the beeper I like that on alarms only personally so you do what you want with that the auto power power up I got off the keyboard I like leaving on that rather than the ABC because I do a lot of typing I'm more used to that keyboard style all right so for the our purposes today let's go ahead and leave the simulator off it'll give you different options so some of those we don't want well, let's go ahead and go to regulatory information and that's just your regular FCC rules okay let's go to communications and serial port we're going to go ahead and go with the standard NMEA and set up on that device list is your eco map and we're not going to label the device and your wireless devices that's where you got your Wi-Fi network advanced we want channel 6 Wi-Fi host this device all right so let's go ahead and move on to units and we got system units and that's set on custom but you can go with the nautical or the metric so all my settings are the standard default north reference we want magnetic the time format we're going to go with 12 hours the variance at zero position format and the time zone I leave the time zone in auto okay other vessels not too worried about that my vessel alarms okay navigation alarms you got arrival off course anchor drag so you can set those up if you'd like and navigation route labels by name turn transition active route start auto guidance turn transition time Alright, so let's take a look at the charts. From here, what we're going to be doing is you go right into the menus of what you want to change. Now, for my purposes, I don't use anything but my fishing chart. So I don't use the navigation chart. Although some of you might, I would imagine the setup is very similar. Use the fishing chart to view more bottom detail and fishing content. Use the navigation chart. For general navigation again you'll go to the screen just go to menu and we'll start out with layers and chart tides and currents I go ahead and turn that off because I don't need those the photo points I leave that factor default now here's another thing if you could if you look over here you see green 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 that means those are on and that's pretty typical for all, everything we're going over today 
is if you take and click that, it'll turn it back to a dark gray. So green means you've got it turned on. So let's take a look at restricted areas. And on there, I want the display on, I want the access on, speed, I want to know if I'm running into a no wake zone, and if there's any off limits fishing is good information. Uh, the rest of them will go ahead and leave off. All right, let's take a look at user data. And waypoint display, we want to have it green, turned on. And if you see those double arrows, that's just basically showing all the different labels that you can use. And if you wanted to just show that symbol only, or if you wanted to hide that symbol, you could do that in here. So if you were fishing and you wanted to see only rock piles, you could go ahead and select just that symbol. And there again, you can see those double arrows. So the tracks, we're going to go ahead and turn both those off for right now. Because I kind of like to use the tracks when I want them, but I don't want them cluttering up my screen a lot of times. Boundaries. We want the boundaries to be turned on. So on this screen, we're going to have waypoint display and boundaries. All right, quick draw contours. Now you can go ahead and start your recording. This is where if you're going to make a quick draw map, you go ahead and start your recording here. And we do want to display the quick draw. And we want to display both the community contours and the user contours. Let's take a look at now manage. That's where when you store your contours, where do you want to store them? I want to store them on the active card. And here's the thing. If you, if you go through a lake or a, a small body of water and you make a good contour map, and you want to copy it, this is where you would copy that card. Now, unlike a regular map, on the contour map, you can set an offset. So if the lake is fluctuating, and you know it's down 10 feet or up 10 feet, you can go ahead and do that offset. And you would just enter that offset in there, and you'd go plus or minus, and then it would give you an accurate uh, depth shown on your map. Now the survey coloring, I'd like to turn that on. All right, edit overlays. The overlay numbers, I want to show those. Factory defaults to hide them. Uh, navigation inset, I want that set to auto or top bar. And edit layout. So there I got water temperature, depth, GPS heading, and time. So actually, I'm going to change a GPS position I leave there. Let's change this to time. We'll change that to time of day. Hour and minute, I think, would be fine. All right, we'll call that done. Navigation inset. Leave that at auto. Now, navigation inset setup. We'll go the route leg details on. Time ETA. And next turn distance. So that's all the same. I'd left those a factory default. All right, waypoints and tracks. So the waypoint display, we want to leave that turned on. Active track options, track color white, or record interval resolution, and recording mode wrap. So those are all default. This is pretty important. Clear active track and save active track. A lot of times you'll have an active track and it will just be really cluttering up your screen. So this is where you'd go ahead and clear, clear your current active track. Or if you're starting a new day on a new lake and you want to clear what you had on there yesterday and start fresh, go in here and clear it there. If you want to save it, same thing, you can save it there. All right, new waypoint. And here, if you wanted to, you could enter coordinates you could use the chart, use your current position, or enter a range or bearing. So if you were looking at the chart and you wanted to enter waypoint, you could do it right there. Select position and be done. Chart setup. Now this one is one that gets a lot of people. Map orientation. The map orientation, I like that set the course up. Now, a lot of people, like to have it the north up. Uh, I don't have a natural compass in my brain like a lot of people do. 
uh, detail we went to normal vessel orientation to auto and world map to basic so that pretty much does it for the basic setup of the fishing chart All right, so let's start out with traditional. Go ahead and go to our sonar, and then go to traditional, and menu. All right, now the gain, it's going to revert back to auto medium. I'll show you here in a little bit where you set it up to where you can adjust that on your screen. So to dial that picture in, you got to do that pretty much every day. Okay, bandwidth, that is set by your frequency, wherever you set your frequency. Like chirp, if we go to 200 kilohertz, you see that moved to 18 degrees, so you don't change it there. You just leave that alone because it is set by your frequency. The zoom, pretty much on all of my sonar setups, I will set the zoom. I will leave everything off. See all the dark grays? To magnify. And the reason for that is I can get that zoom box and just pinch it closed by having just the magnify on. All right, record sonar. Again, the eco maps, I haven't figured out yet how to get pictures and recordings off of it. Otherwise, I'd be showing you guys recordings, but that's where you would start a recording if you wanted to. All right, sonar setup. So we're gonna hide the depth line, on screen control, and I went through this in the other video, because the range you can do with the plus and minus buttons up here, I set that to gain. That way I control my gain on screen. The overlay data, I want to look at my device voltage, my water temperature, my depth, and time of day. So I leave all those turned on. Installation, transducer type again. I like leaving that in auto. Uh, restore sonar defaults. If you get to where just, you know, you don't know where you're at, you can restore just the sonar defaults. Scroll speed. I always leave this in auto and that's on all my screens. If you need to play with that a little bit you certainly can but leaving it in auto I feel is a pretty good choice to give you a good picture because when you slow down or you're stopped you know that screen will slow down. If you're speeding up it adjusts with you. Parents, color scheme yellow and you can change that. There's different color schemes. Uh, fish symbols, I leave those off. Edge, I leave off. And that picture advance, one to one, I leave that right there. All right, so let's take a look at clear view. Go to our sonar, clear view and menu and contrast I normally start out around 70 and that seems to be a pretty good spot for me down my frequency because I'm shooting this on the front of my boat I'm on my GT52 transducer Let's leave that at 455 for the purposes of the video again the zoom Let's go ahead and hit that magnify so I got that little pop-up box. And you can play with some of this other stuff. I just personally, uh, I like that little pop-up box. Uh, record sonar, again, if you know how to do it and you want to record the sonar, you could start there. And sonar setup. Depth line, hide. On-screen control, again. I can adjust the range with these buttons, so I'm going to leave that at brightness. Now to adjust the contrast, you're always going to have to go into the menu to adjust the contrast. Overlay data. Let's show the voltage device. Water temperature. I want to see my depth. And I want to see my time of day. Because depending on the combo that you select, uh, this may be the screen that shows up that shows all that information. So when you build your combos, you'll know what I'm talking about installation there see i've got it in auto and it's reading it as a gt52 transducer as soon as i put it back in its regular position 
it'll go to the GT54 and it'll give me the correct frequencies. Scroll speed again, we're going to leave that in auto. And this one does have the factory default of auto, where the traditional didn't. Color scheme, this is where you can change it to what you want. I like the moss. And in advance, now the interference and the TVG, I normally leave those both in low. Surface noise, I show that. And bottom search limit, I just leave that in auto. All right, the brightness, again, that'll default to auto medium. Just leave it there and adjust it when you get out on the water. The range, uh, I leave mine in auto because my lake goes from 70 foot to 15 foot in a heartbeat. I normally just leave that in auto. Pause sonar, you could do it from here if you wanted to. Sonar transmit is off right now because we have all the sonar turned off because we're out of the water. And edit overlays. Navigation inset, I leave that at auto, and top bar none, bottom bar none. And again, all this is personal preference, so uh, you guys go ahead and play with that. But the, for the purposes of this video, we're just getting you out on the water with some initial settings, so you can go out and find some fish pretty quick. Alright, let's take a look at side view. So sonar, side view, and go to the menu. Now contrast, I normally start out around 80% on my side view. My frequency, again, I'll stay at 455, and if you look, because of the transducer, it doesn't show my 1120, and my zoom. The default is nothing, and again, hit that magnify so I have that little box. And a lot of people will just leave all of them off, and I, I recommend on the side view sometimes just leaving everything, you know, all the zoom functions off unless you want to try it. All right, again, you can start a recording, sonar recording, and sonar setup. Depth line I got on hide, on screen control. Let's go ahead and change that to brightness. And color scheme. Go ahead and go to our moss. Advanced interference and TVG, both at low. Scroll speed, let's go to auto on that. Range lines hide, overlay data. Again, we're gonna turn all those on. They're on by default in the side view. And installation, now this is kinda of neat and I showed it in one of the videos. Uh, you can flip the left and the right. If for some reason your transducer, I don't know, we're facing the other way or something, uh, you can flip the left and right. Transducer type again. We're gonna leave that in auto. So let's just for uh, for the purposes of the video, let's find the GT54 here, which is the transducer I have in the back. See now our frequency is 1120. Depending on the transducers, what frequencies you can select. And so my range. I set that at 70 foot to start out with, and I'll adjust it from there, but don't leave that in auto because you don't want it the side to side switching on you while you're going down the lake. You can pause the sonar from here. Of course, sonar transmit is turned off right now. Uh, view selection, and I showed this in some other videos. You can view just the left side, just the right side, or left and right. So if you're going along a bank and you want to look at just one side and show more screen, more detail, you can pick just the left or the right side from there. And edit overlays. Navigation inset, leave that in auto, top and bottom bar none. And when you get all done and you get ready to build your combos and play around with it a little bit, 
go back to settings system simulator turn that on and there you go and you can see I got my magnification box there that's what I really wanted to show you was I can get rid of that by pinching or I can open it up and if you look over here it tells you what magnification you got and you can adjust that with your fingers you can make it less or more magnification really like that feature and when it's out you want it out of your way just pinch it away very handy let's see if it saved my combos oh no I gotta build all my combos again oh dang it Go combos, customize, add, do one here, tap that window, go to a fishing chart, tap that window, and we're going to go to our traditional chirp, and we'll set that as shortcut key one. See there? Page saved as shortcut key one. And you can see here on your combos it marked that. So all I got to do is press one and that one comes up. All right, so now I got to go build all my combos again. See the things I do for you guys? So since we've been over all the settings, if you want to understand a little bit more about what you're seeing on your sonar and how frequency comes into play, here's the video for you. We'll see you on the next one.